welcome back to Play and Trade Guitars. I'm John, that's Zach behind the camera, and this is Play and Trade Guitars, where we play it and trade it. I'm excited to be looking at the latest iteration of the Epiphone Sheridan. Nice, clean, simple name, Epiphone Sheridan. It's part of their original Archtop collection over at Epiphone and has a price tag of $8.99. I'll tell you everything you need to know about the guitar. I'll give you a brief comparison between this guitar and the very popular Epiphone Sheridan 2 Pro. And then, of course, we'll put it on the bench, pull it apart before we plug it in and play it. And if you stick with me to the end, I'll give you a final score and raw reaction to playing this brand new iteration of the Sheridan. Before we dive in at the top, make sure you're signed up for our latest giveaway. We're giving away a Gibson Les Paul Deluxe Gold Top Guitar. All the entry information is in the description. And remember always, if you're in the market to buy gear, click to buy gear using our link because it really does support our channel. And in addition to that, you're gonna get fast free shipping and really easy payment plans, including no credit check payment plans. Easy way to buy new gear. So let's dive in to the Epiphone Sheridan. Let's head over to the bench. Let's get this out of the case and get to work. First things, I do want to point out it comes with a premium Epiphone gig bag. That's nice. A lot of Epiphones these days do not come with anything. Um, this does, however, come with the bag. So a little bit of extra value at the $899 price tag. All right, check this out. It is a beautiful guitar. A uh, very iconic frequencator tailpiece. That's a differentiator already. Uh, check this out, mini humbuckers. The Sheridan was produced with mini humbuckers from about the early 60s up until about 1970 when they shifted production overseas. Beautiful natural finish. This is the Indian Laurel fretboard. I like the feel of Indian Laurel over Pau Ferro. And uh, some of these details and comparisons uh, you can make to the Epiphone Pro 2 Sheridan is gonna be on this guitar, mini humbuckers. On that one, regular humbuckers. On that guitar, you're gonna have a fixed stop tailpiece compared to this Frequencator on the original collection version. Uh, of course, the Indian Laurel board versus Pau Ferro on the Pro 2. And then the neck material is different. This is more premium with mahogany neck on the uh, Epiphone Sheridan version that was just released and the gig bag. So just a few quick things. Uh, if you like electronics options, the Epiphone Pro 2 Sheridan does offer the coil tapping and the push-pull volumes. So this is just more of a kind of a straightforward original collection, uh, kind of a vintage reissue, if you will, of an early 60s Epiphone Sheridan. So it looks pretty sharp out of the gate. Let's head over to the bench and pull it apart before we plug it in. All right, this is a guitar you gotta start up at the top of the headstock, because look at this beautiful Tree of Life Epiphone inlay, uh, kind of a vintage Epiphone logo, which looks really sharp. You got that open book headstock. You got these gold Grover tutors. Uh, I love the natural finish on this mahogany neck. This neck definitely looks a little more premium than a lot of guitars you see. And I love this natural finish. You got binding everywhere. You've got binding on the body, binding on the neck, binding on the headstock. Coming down, Indian Laurel board. These are also an iconic part of the look of a Sheridan. You've got these acrylic block inlays, but then the abalone pearl triangle in the middle, which I think looks really cool, dresses it up quite a bit. And then this is at its heart and soul. This is a semi-hollow guitar, so you've got laminated maple and then a maple center block. This version is gonna sport mini humbuckers, which were on the guitar from the early 60s on. And then this funky looking frequencer tailpiece, which is gonna be definitely a difference from the Epiphone Sheridan Pro 2, which is gonna have a regular stop tailpiece. So the Frequencator tailpiece has got these two kind of clips. Uh, you just feed the ball end of the string back and through, and then it pulls itself taut. Uh, but for now, we'll go ahead and set that off to the side and get these strings out of the way. And check out this feature, also the Sheridan, is you kind of have this in, you kind of have this inset binding uh, on the actual fretboard itself. And sometimes you'll see this, I think more traditionally, you'll see it kind of up and over as a continuation of the binding. But in this version, you can kind of see the laurel poking out and then these kind of pinstripes before the laurel continues. Let's go ahead and get some neck measurements. Graftech nut, 1.68 inches. You have a slim tapered neck, 0.81 inches at the first, up to 0.88 inches at the 12th. Laminated maple top, back and sides, arch top design. Thickness comes in at the bottom about here, 1.77 inches. All right, let's flip up these mini humbuckers. We've got the uh, Pro Mini Humbucker in bridge, Pro Mini Humbucker in neck. You can also get a look at the routing as well as that maple center block. So mini humbuckers tend to have a little bit less output than a humbucker. 
because of that, they have a little bit more clarity, a little bit more clean headroom, and a little bit more highs rather than the kind of beefier lows that you get from a humbucker. There is a distinct difference. You can check out our video where we just actually shot out P90s, humbuckers, and mini humbuckers. But I like the sound of mini humbuckers. It's, it's a great sound. Let's flip on the multimeter and see where these read. These particular minis read in at 7.5 in bridge, 6.2 in neck, 3.4 combined. So actually, I have a feeling they boosted the output a little bit of the bridge um, beyond what you would see in a, tr in a more traditional mini humbucker. So maybe a little bit of a modern appointment there. So frequencator tailpiece, what it does, you can tell me in the comments, but it's a little more complicated than your traditional stop tailpiece. Um, it's not terribly hard to restring though, because basically you just take the ball into the string and drop it in to the back bracket. And uh, that's that. So that's an interesting catch. The uh, wound D string is unwound at the top because it's probably extra long. All right, let's get a weight. I was gonna say it didn't feel very light to me and it comes in at eight pounds, uh, 12 ounces, we'll call it 8.75 pounds, which I mean, it's not out of the range for a semi hollow, but it's a little bit heavier to me. Um, so 8.75 pounds for this guitar. And then let's go ahead and flip it around and get an initial reaction. Nice loud ring to it. One of the benefits, of course, of a semi-hollow or semi-acoustic guitar is that you could really play this, you know, sitting on the couch, unplugged, and hear plenty. Um, feels good. I like the shape of the neck. It's, um, it's slim, but it's not too slim. Feels good in the hands. Construction feels good. No sharp fret ends or anything like that. Uh, the action might be a tad high. I'll probably drop that before we plug it in. Um, but construction is beautiful. I love this new finish. Simple controls. Uh, this guitar won't sport any type of coil tapping or anything like that, coil splitting. So just standard volume, volume, tone, tone, three-way toggle switch. Um, beautiful guitar. So remember, if you're in the market for this guitar or any other gear, click to buy using our link. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think of this guitar so far. And then after I'm done playing it, remember, stick around and give you a final score. And I'll also give you my raw reaction, honest reactions to what I think about the guitar after playing it. Um, so all that said, let's plug it in. This is always the most fun part. Drop a comment as we go. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Thank you.
right, the Epiphone shared it at a price tag of $8.99. I'll tell you what I loved about it, what I didn't like about it, and if it's right for you. Drop a comment, let me know about what you think about how this guitar sounds. I thought it played really well. Overall playability. I like this neck, it feels really comfortable to play. I will tell you that this, um, the, the frequency, what the hell is this called, frequencator? I will tell you that the frequencator I think is really just a pain. There's a reason you don't see those on more guitars. Uh, it was an idea, they tried it, they brought it back. I don't know if you really need it personally. I, I like the stop tail piece that you'd find in something like the Epiphone Sheridan Pro 2. Um, that said, I don't know if I can really hear much of a difference. Supposedly the frequencator tailpiece is done to balance the frequencies between the low and high strings. Whether or not it does that, we can all debate. Um, I find it kind of a pain in terms of changing strings. And also, I feel like you'd run a risk of having a string that's not long enough because on the wound D string, for example, that's gonna be the longest bit that has to make it from all the way up here. And even from the factory, you can actually see that the, the winding ran out and they went with the, um, you know, the plain steel string underneath. And that could mean that some strings won't work with this guitar, so just, just be aware of that. All of that is a little clumsy. However, the feel of the actual neck, um, the frets, everything after I lowered the action, it came from the factory with the action a little bit high, I lowered that down, and I thought I could get around the guitar really well. It's always nice to have the double cutaway. Uh, very playable guitar, fun to play. Overall sound, I actually really like the sound of the mini humbuckers, it has a nice characteristic. And again, it's debatable how much this frequencator tailpiece does to the guitar, if anything, uh, but it is a differentiator. I like the simple controls, so in terms of playability and sound, I like that they're giving you the sound of the mini humbuckers without much nonsense in terms of push-pull or anything else going on, so I can appreciate that. And then overall value at $899, it is more expensive than the best-selling uh, Sheridan Pro 2, which has been around for a while now. You are getting some premium features. You're getting the premium Epiphone uh, gig bag, which comes with it. Uh, you're getting this beautiful mahogany neck, which I really like, actually. It looks more like a, more like a higher-end Gibson neck or something. I, I do like that a lot. Uh, you're getting the mini humbuckers, which are distinctly different about this guitar. And you are getting the frequencer if that's something that you want. I mean, they are bringing that back and giving it to you. So in that sense, it's kind of cool. At $899, it's certainly not the most expensive Epiphone we've seen uh, recently. So I give it pretty high marks in overall value. I will say the guitar was somewhat heavy. Uh, so again, kind of detracting a little bit probably from playability. It's, it's, my back hurts after playing the song. And I don't know if it's, you know, it's not as heavy as many of the Les Pauls we play, but something about the shape, it's, I feel like I'm kind of getting pulled forward. So maybe it's a little big for me. Overall score, um, I'm impressed with the sounds of this guitar. I think the pickups sound great. I'm gonna go ahead and give the Epiphone Sheridan an overall score of 8.2. And uh, I think it represents a good value. I'm not sure if people are gonna be sold on buying this over the Epiphone Pro 2 Sheridan, just because that's gonna have your traditional humbuckers, your regular stop tailpiece, um, and some other features like that. I do prefer the feel of Indian Laurel to the Powell Ferrell that you'll find on that Sheridan too. So just a couple kind of thoughts. Uh, but let me know what you think. I'm gonna go ahead and give it an overall score of 8.2. Remember, if you're in the market for this guitar or any other gear, like the Sheridan Pro 2, check out our link. Buying gear really does support our channel and we'd appreciate it. Check out one of these videos. Make sure you sign up for our giveaway in the description. All the info is there. See you on the next video. I'll see you guys next time.